Americans, we love the UK. And I think part of why I love the UK so much, I don't know about you, but I just love that it has like this familiarity to it, like a home-like feel. And maybe part of that is because it actually reminds me a lot of home. And so while we're in my home area uh, in the Pacific Northwest, we decided we would make a quintessential British holiday here in the Northwest. And we'll see how the American versions of British things stack up to their British counterparts. I think the British things will still win, maybe. <laughs> maybe, but there's no better way to start today than by heading to the coast. I think that feels like a very appropriate British holiday, don't you? Just had to reverse backwards to let someone through on the covered bridge. So this feels very England right now to have to like back up down a little narrow road. We have arrived in Astoria, which is one of my favorite places to visit. Probably because growing up, there were so many iconic movies filmed here, like The Goonies and Short Circuit and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. <laughs> but iconic. Anyway, yeah, but even though there's a it's just a really neat town, but we are here for one reason, and that is to get some proper fish and chips by the seaside. Also a good sign of a place is when there's a line. You know when there's a line, you're gonna be in for a treat, right? <laughs> Steam coming out of the boat Thank you. is the loveliest steam. <laughs> it is a good steam. <laughs> okay, you want to malt vinegar that up? Nice work. These look pretty tasty. I don't know if you can see them in there, but I think those are some legit chips. Those are some chunky boys. Yeah, they're not bad looking chips. Hot. We are about to try some fish and chips in the US and see how they stack up now that we've been to England. Tuna is pretty unheard of around here. I assume it probably is in the UK too. Uh, normally we would get like cod or halibut, but no, these are tuna. So Jeremy's gonna try them for the first time. We'll see how he likes them. On a nice summer day, you could sit, eat on one of the little benches they have. Uh, it's a little bit cold and windy, so I think we're gonna sample them out here and then maybe go warm ourselves in the car. <laughs> we vinegared them up earlier, so I'm gonna just try it with that first. You know, that's got a pretty nice crunch on the outside. And nice flavor. I don't think I've ever had tuna like that before. It looks like standard, they come with ketchup and tartar sauce. Although I think when we have been in the UK that a lot of uh, people either call it tartar sauce or Tartare sauce? Correct me if I'm wrong, but we just say tartar. Like, I think the second T does not get as no enough enunciation <laughs> here. <laughs> That's nice tartar sauce. It's got a pickly dill kind of thing going on. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. I love it. I love the breading there. I don't, see, I feel like sometimes people are hit or miss about the tuna here. I think the tuna is excellent. It's been a really long time since I've been to this place. I thought that they had like, now that we've been to the UK, that they had like actual chips because you can find fish and chips a lot of places in America, but they're usually just like french fries of some variety. These are more like steak fries, they're not like fresh yeah. cut fries, but they're still pretty good. Had to finish these bad boys off in the car because it was cold out there. They're really good. The chips, they were not British chips. And the other thing that's sad, especially for this guy right here, is that they, can, you can't just order curry sauce. Like I, I would be shocked to find a place in the United States where you could get fish and chips and curry sauce. We may be able to find it somewhere, but not at a little booth like this was. Not common, not, I mean, have you ever? I've never. I don't know. Never. Never so far. Come on, America, why don't you have curry sauce? That's just a shame. How did those stack up to British fish and chips for you? Oh, they were good. The fish is different. I wouldn't expect tuna, but it was still pretty good. The breading was really nice. And the chips were, they were steak fries, but they were still pretty good steak fries. I just remembered two more awesome movies that were filmed in this town before we head out of it. Uh, Free Willy and Kindergarten Cop. 
We, we drove by the school. <laughs> anyway, it's so much fun to visit Astoria. I love this town so much. It's just a cool town. It's got, got an interesting history. It used to be an old cannery uh, town and it's lovely. But now we're heading to the actual beach. We're crossing back over into Washington. We're going to Long Beach, but not California. The, the northern one that's colder and more exciting, maybe? <laughs> We made it to Long Beach. Look, there's the ocean even. And there's seagulls. We see those a lot in the UK. What do you think, Jer? Are the seagulls here as good as the British counterparts? <laughs> are you really asking me if the seagulls are as good? In in the UK there were signs about how they'll steal your ice cream. I don't I don't know if that happens here. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we should get some ice cream and test it out. <laughs> It's not a great day to be at the ocean, but uh, this beach you can actually drive on. I don't think my mom would appreciate that very much for me to drive in her car on the beach and get stuck. So we'll just turn around and head back into town. One of the things that I really like about the UK is that so many of the hotels and places that we stayed are just very historic and interesting. But a lot of them have like clawfoot tubs and things like that. So I felt it was appropriate to book us a room here at the Shelburne Hotel. This hotel has been in operation since 1896, making it the oldest operating hotel in the state of Washington. Oh man, I love the stained glass windows. It's so pretty. You ready to go check out our room? Yeah, let's go do it. It's so cozy in here. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> it's really neat. Another reason I booked this is because there's a pub attached to this hotel. It's a pub and an inn, just, just like in England. Welcome to our room. This is an attic queen. It's kind of fun. Oh, look. <laughs> There's where you're sleeping tonight, Jeremy. Just kidding, I won't make you do that. I don't have to sleep in the cubby bed. <laughs> no, but you could if you wanted to. Maybe I want to, it looks cozy. <laughs> I like the decor in here. I love these, like the, the old wooden attic, but I love that they painted it gray. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, this has got a really cool vibe. I was noticing downstairs they had a sign about how much pence something was and I also noticed that their pub menu had some British things on it and I was like somebody here is British or they know someone British or something they're I'm on to them I'm on to them they're trying to make me have that English experience here and I appreciate it they even gave us complimentary glasses of champagne at check-in so that's nice I'll, I'll cheers myself for now because Jeremy went to the bathroom <laughs> Mm, it's really good. Even though this is the oldest continuously operating hotel in Washington State, it actually changed ownership a few years ago. And the people that bought it own several properties in and around uh, the coastal area. And so we have access to a saltwater pool and some other amenities that's down at the bigger hotel, a little ways down the way. And they also have a distillery so we can get free gin tasting and get our tasting on if we want to from staying here. So that's that's an option we have as well. We are just wandering around uh, along the, the main strip of Long Beach. And I think one of the things that felt like home in the UK, or felt familiar at least, is when we visited some of the seaside towns that we did, they had like fun arcades and amusement parks and things. And I was like, oh, we do that too. So I think that's what we're gonna do this evening. We're gonna have some fun at the fun land. <laughs> they used to have bumper cars in there and they were the best bumper cars ever. There used to be a, a selection of small amusement rides here. They've been gone for years. And the, the bumper cars were, I think they still come back in the summer sometimes. I'm not entirely sure I haven't been down here in a few years, but man, I love me a good bumper car. What's your favorite seaside amusement thing? Here, probably where we're going, the arcade. <laughs> this arcade doesn't have a Jurassic bone blaster like the one in Whitby did, but it's a good arcade. I'm curious, what's your favorite thing to do by the seaside? I wonder if we could do it here. I, I bet we could. I feel like seaside vibes are, are similar.
You know, for 4 p.m. on a Friday night, this town isn't too happening in the off season. Hopefully the fun land is open. Looks like we're in luck. They're open till 10. Okay, I knew I had faith in the fun land. All right, let's go get our games on. <laughs> clean and fresh in here. Wow, there's so many cooler things than there were than last time we are here. I love that this is now like half coin pushers. I couldn't be more excited about it. As long as they still have my favorites, like this knockdown one and the spin to win, man, I love this one. It used to be like this whole wall was just these, but at least they still have two of each of them. I know what Jeremy and I are gonna duke it out in. I think Jeremy just rolled his eyes at me at that. Fast and the Furious? I don't wanna play that. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. 22 tickets, I don't know. Is that a great return? I'm not sure. We'll find out. We're gonna go play the new things that are actually cool, I guess. I feel like we can't really rank this compared to the American or the British counterpart because we didn't actually play anything like this in the UK. So I'm curious, what kind of games do you have? Are they similar to this or are they different? And where should we go check them out? What town should we try the arcade at? I like that they set chairs here. <laughs> they know their audience. <laughs> I'm not really sure if I'm doing this right, but I think I'm doing pretty good over here. I'm really close to getting this one. I made some others come over, and now I need more. I need you, I need you to knock some of these green chips down. They're probably good things, right? Now we gotta get all our tokens for all the things we've gotten. <laughs> What you doing, Kara? Winning a, a tiny chubby unicorn squishy, hopefully. Nice. Oh, I might not be able to get it. Oh, sad. I'm gonna end it all where we started it, on the first machine. We have so many prize choices that it's like a walkthrough exhibit. And look, oh look, we could get all this little stuff. We have so much money, we could even get a, a Barbie. I also love that they have practical prizes like candles and games and like throws and pillows. Came back out and it's dark outside, but hey, we actually picked out a cool prize. This is the first time that I haven't walked away with like a toy. It's pretty neat though, I mean, it's definitely better than like other things that we've gotten at like Chuck E. Cheese or something. That's so, fair. I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. I'm ready for some dinner. And I think this town is pretty much closed. I think the fun land and the tavern are the only things open. So, I think we're gonna head back to our hotel and get some dinner there. Especially because we can get some well, British guess, treats. Yeah. This is where we're gonna go tomorrow, and I'm excited to show you what's inside. We have made it back to our historic eatery and house. I don't know why I said that, it's not a house. <laughs> you know, we've lucked out with the weather. Part of what I thought would be very um, similar to the last experience we had in the UK, when specifically in Dover and Kent, we had a very rainy time. But we're used to that because here in the Northwest, it's a very rainy time. And somehow today, we got pretty lucky and we have had minimal rain, although it is a little chilly this evening now. When they have Welsh ribbit on the menu, you gotta order it, right? So, I mean, we've only had it once before, but it was with 
No salad. Yeah, there was no salad with it. Smells mustard. Yeah, I had mustard on it last time. It's good. It looks good. It smells good. Cheesy, mustardy, delicious. I think that was equally as good as the rivet we had in Wales. Different, a little fancier. And it had a really nice salad with it, which we did not have in Wales. Our little light eats and uh, drinks were fantastic. I think we're just going to have a chill evening here in our hotel. I mean, there's not a lot of other choices. Most everything else is closed. We have a full day tomorrow, so we will see you bright and early. Good morning, look how sunny it is today. What a lovely day we have this morning. <laughs> I slept so good last night. It was a pretty I, comfortable bed. I am a little bit sad to leave this hotel this morning, but it's been a really good hotel. You know, I've been coming to the beach, this beach specifically, since I was a kid. This is the first time I've stayed here and I would love to stay here again. I was reading last night that it is named after the Shelburne Hotel that is in Dublin, a fancy five-star hotel that is also very old, probably older, if it was the inspiration for this place. <laughs> we have some fun things planned today. I have to say, the one thing that I was gonna basically make the comparison of was British weather to the Pacific Northwest, because I feel like we have some pretty similar weather here. It's like dreary, rainy, we get a lot of similar weather. However, I guess similar to British weather, it's also pretty unpredictable. It was not supposed to be sunny today, and I was pleasantly surprised to open the window this morning. <laughs> I guess we're off? <laughs> yeah, we're off. Let's go have some more fun today. First stop is at the cottage bakery to acquire some baked goods. I don't think that our bakeries here in the US are very similar to ones that we went to in the UK, but it's a tradition. You gotta you gotta stop at the cottage bakery and get yourself a devil dog or a maple bar. We got a couple treats for us and then the rest we're gonna bring back to our family, but I have one other stop that we have to do that's just get it out of the way, gotta show them. This right here is Marsh's Free Museum. And growing up and coming to this place, I feel like this is the one place from my childhood that gave me a curiosity about curiosities, I guess. I think that this place is a very unique place that has inspired me to find other interesting, quirky, unique places. And I can't wait to show you what's inside. And I'm also curious, once you see what's inside, please, are there places like this in the UK? Because I don't know of any, but I want there to be, and I want to go to all of them. <laughs> one part gift shop, one part museum of weird antiquities. This place has so many interesting, quirky things, like two-headed animals, there's like weird old timey machines, like naughty Victorian era little like ooh la la machines. <laughs> and probably the most famous resident of Marshes, Jake the Alligator Man. I want to play one of these music machines, but they take dimes. And what did I have in my purse? You know, a, a quarter, a penny, and uh... A, a two pound coin. <laughs> Should come as no surprise that Jeremy has found the the badge collection. I like the Minnie Mouse one. The Minnie Mouse Disneyland yeah. one's pretty good. Jake is an alleged half human, half alligator person thing. <laughs> and he is definitely the most famous part of Marsh's Free Museum. If you come here, you're, you're pretty much coming to see Jake. And who wouldn't want to? Look at that face. I got I got some nickels with my quarter. So now we can play a bunch of things. Ooh. Lead the way. Good thing I traded them that uh, quarter for a bunch of nickels so that then we could just lose them on this machine. But we got two tiny shells. So. always have a blast in there and hey it was like a 30 cent endeavor <laughs> if you know a 
of any places like this that you that either have a Jake the Alligator Man or just a Marsh's vibe in general, definitely leave us a comment and let me know because I want to visit it. We have one more thing we have to do. We gotta have a proper a proper beach visit while we're here. Well then let's head off to the beach. This is Waikiki Beach at Cape Disappointment. There was just a really big storm and so I always love to see what kind of driftwood and things have washed up because they all collect here. It is starting to sprinkle just a little bit, but the fact that like there is no wind and the sun is out, this is a very unusual circumstance here at the Washington coast. I mean, in the off season especially, but like anytime you're lucky if it's sunny and uh, wow, I'm I, this is the best weather I've ever seen here. Usually the weather's so dismal that we don't actually go down to the beach. We're gonna do it right now. We've got some debris to get through. We made it through that and no falls. I'd say that deserves a high five. The waves are a rumbling behind me. I think the tide is actually coming back in, which means I think we need to get out of here. And now it's time for us to make the two hour trek back to Portland. I think this was, you know, this was a very last minute planned adventure. <laughs> and I feel like it's been a little bit uh, of an interesting experiment, but I hope that you enjoyed coming along with us. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, then give it a little subscribe. And thank you to our patrons for following along and supporting us all the time. And we are just saying goodbye. We'll see you soon. <laughs> do, you, do you need to come to Pleasure Land to try the Jurassic Boat Monster? <laughs>